One of the questions that I actually have is why the airlines have been such a tough investment over the past couple of years, right? I mean, we've seen the TSA numbers recover. We've sure. seen, and, and we hear the commentary from the CEOs, and you think maybe we should be all the way back to those pre-pandemic highs, but we're just not, are we? Uh, we're not. Uh, we think we can get there. Uh, you know, I think one of the impediments here to four has been the uncertainty around corporate demand recovery and the extent to which that would be impaired longer term because of COVID. And, and thankfully, those concerns are increasingly being put to rest. There was also a period where, you know, a lot of investors thought that passengers weren't going to be comfortable getting back in, in, into cramped quarters with, with strangers. And, you know, what we've seen, uh, I mean, you know, you, you had those sound bites from, from the CEOs who I know. And uh, look, I, I've never seen demand diverge from my own forecasts by this much, wow. except for on the way down, the onset of COVID. Clearly, this is better and equally as torrid. Has their earnings power been diluted by debt they've had to take on to get through the pandemic? Yeah, look, look, with, without question, uh, you know, balance sheets have come under varying degrees of strain during the downturn, uh, with the notable exception of Alaska and Delta. Uh, shareholders were diluted elsewhere. Uh, it, it's going to take some time to dig out of that. But all the signs at this point, you know, particularly the tightness of supply, this chronic pilot shortage that the industry is now facing, you know, we think that this re-deleveraging process, you know, is going to occur faster, certainly than what we were thinking 12, even six months ago. Absolutely. So you have uh, United in particular, you think, has quite a bit of upside, maybe 50 percent upside yeah. from here. Why does this name jump out to you? Well, look, we, we have to go. We let our models lead the way. I never wake up thinking, oh, you know, today would be a good day for an upgrade or a downgrade. Our, our models predicate what we do. And when we, you know, extrapolate the demand strength that United is guiding to in the second quarter, you know, we take that to the out quarters, it raised my estimates by, a, you know, a significant degree. What I would note is that maybe I've learned nothing, you know, <laughs> here because United still says they're going to make a profit this year. I, I can't get there with my model. They wow. think they're going to do a 9% pre-tax margin next year. I'm at about five and a half, but that still justifies, that still gets me to a level of earnings that justifies an overweight. And those are my favorite calls to make. We don't need United Management to crush it. Mediocrity will suffice <laughs> and still portends pretty significant upside from yesterday's close. And they do, on the earnings piece of this, face a couple of major headwinds. I mean, jet fuel prices for one or costs, labor mm -hmm. costs, uh, obviously another. They have raised fares. And sort of your point here is that that impressively has not created any demand destruction yet. Are, what is that point, and are we anywhere close to it? We don't think we're we're near it at all. You know, quite honestly, it's it's the economy that determines the overall demand for commercial air travel. And as others have opined on your programs, uh, you know, typically airline industry revenue is about ninety five basis points of nominal GDP. Uh, it, there's no reason to believe that that long term relationship has been impaired by COVID. And what it suggests is that the industry is some 45 to 50 million, you know, billion, excuse me, uh, $55 billion short of where it otherwise should be in this level of the economic output. So wow. that, that gives us confidence that we're nowhere near the point of demand destruction. Now, what I'd monitor for, obviously, for leisure demand, if you start seeing people economize elsewhere across the travel ribbon, you know, renting smaller cars, dining at, at less expensive restaurants, that could portend some spending strain, but we're not going to see it first with the airlines. So we should have a good leading indicator there.